Death to the new flesh. Death to five or seconds. Hey there, this is uh, Buster's coming back. I've been sick for a few episodes. I'm super stoked to be here today. I think we've got a bevy of new topics. And, uh, well, I'll give it to Pinback to introduce a surprise we have for you. Ah, uh, yeah, you've got a surprise guest today. Um, Noel Lemus, my acquaintance and known... I don't know, how do you want to introduce yourself? I'm a random internet person, I think, is how I'm best described. Right, before we were... Uh... Before we started recording, I was saying uh, we're looking for some special guests, some internet, uh, I don't know, maybe infamous internet personas like the Time Cube guy, and then someone broke it to me that the, the Time Cube guy died. So we will not be having him on this episode. We will be engaging, hopefully at some point, in some cyber necromancy in order to raise the spirit of Gene Ray to tell us about four-day dimensional four-sided hypercubes but of time but that uh, tonight yeah. is not the night yeah no I, I i have a strong feeling he wouldn't listen to us educated stupids anyways so i don't know man i mean i'm not that educated maybe no. i could break, i could have broken through to him maybe uh, or he could break through to you time cube <laughs> has four sides and it cuts all ways um, i'm dr shock and tonight we're uh well this is our special 10th uh anniversary 10 10 whole episodes 10 more 10 more episodes you're on www.homovulgaris.com 100 years 100 years we'll get that sauce well yeah we'll get that sauce and i guess that's a good jumping off point um this particular april fools there weren't many good april fool stories because it seems like it seems like this whole fake news thing has kind of put a damper on like News sites being like, haha, look, we made a fake story. Every what you're not laughing? Shit. Honestly, I think April Fool's Day just kind of sucks. It was yeah. particularly dry this year, though. Yeah, yeah. I I think I think a lot of it's like the fake news. You can't you can't have a joke news article anymore. And then all right, so if you make a joke about how terrible the world is, it, it's gonna come true. And then if you make a joke about a nice thing, people are gonna be like, ah, remember. Remember when things weren't terrible? We laughed at that. Yeah, there is there is really no provision of satire that kind of just doesn't hasn't come true yet. Yeah, yeah. So April Fools was really really bleak this year when it came to those things, you know. You can, yeah, I mean think about last year. I think Apple did a fake like a fake product or something like that. And and now like they've taken the headphone jack out of the the new iPod and everyone was like you're joking, right? No. Oh. No, the iPhones don't have headphone jacks anymore. That's not a joke. I mean, like at this point, it's just like anything's possible. So what's the point? Of one more dumb piece of bullshit. Honestly, every everything, every port after USB 2.0 is bullshit. Yeah, no, no. Like I hear there's a USB three, but I wouldn't know if I'm using it. But yeah. speaking of uh, <laughs> taking Does things it? back to their roots, as it were. And uh, sticking with antiquated models of things, uh, I we, we've we've been doing some research at Homo Vulgaris, diving deep deep into the recesses of the forgotten parts of the internet. Finding the primo buried websites, um, and we've been discussing a new concept. And we have, uh, well, in in the tradition of Pee Wee's Playhouse, we have the word of the day. Which is what, Shocks? Cyber primitivism. Cyber primitivism. Well, that's a good word. I missed this. Yeah, no, no. We, we, we were trying to discuss the idea that what we were doing was actually some sort of almost anthropology thing where we're looking at old cultures that were limited by the technologies at that time but still wanted to communicate and participate in you know an active uh, social group with each other and so 
there were things such as the 56k OK thread because it would be rude for me to make a forum post with more than three images because that would slow you down. See, I see it less as anthropology and more as uh, occult studies in order to find a better way of living. I think we should embrace techno cyber primitivism and just go back to a web of point one lifestyle. Well, you know, and, and it's it's interesting because uh, you were viewing all the stuff that we were viewing, these old websites, via a mobile phone. And that was giving you uh, a very interesting perspective because those things, of course, were not designed for a, a phone to navigate. And the resolutions are all jacked up. Yeah, your phone assumes that everything's in, like, HD is the standard, so it kind of scales to that. When you're dealing with these, like, well, like, pixelated images, you have to zoom way the fuck in to see anything, because your phone just be like, oh, man. What, what are you looking at? Ants? You looking at, you're looking at internet ants? All right. There, there they are. Back in the day, you had to, if you were designing and laying out my homepage, you had to decide, man, what was that one GIF banner that you were going to put on there? Because you only got one, or your page was <laughs> overloaded, you know? Like, you had to choose the GIF banner and, and, then, and then reuse the same graphics all over your website. You know, that way someone could keep it in their cache and load it. And frames, if uh, anyone knows anything about uh, web design, it's the... Uh, yeah, a little bit. Everything's frames now, really. To warn you, like, warning frames. Well, but back then, frames were even more utilitarian because you would keep your navigation and sidebars in their own frames, and that way you didn't, like, move away from them and unload the images and graphic overlay that was your navigation bar. Um, and so um, we were looking at an old web circle, which, oh God, I almost feel like I have to explain what a web circle is because they don't do those anymore. Um, but they had things like, here, are you stuck in someone else's frame? Click here to clear all frames. Because you'd be navigating on your original Sims custom bulletin board and fan art site. And you'd be like, hey, I want to check out this person in the web ring with this guy who runs bad Sonic fan fiction. But now I've got the navigations for the Sims website all cluttered around me. And How do I get rid of that? I just don't know. Yeah, I got it. Before... Following all these Tenchi Muyo kiss dolls. And, right. Uh, just gotta get these frames off my screen. Before like aggregation, before you had like um, like Google, before Google was like a, a standard, and before you had like Reddit and Facebook to like filter stuff to you, the internet was this was it was like a, almost like a bunch of villages, and you kind of went from one to the other, just following links. And right. Uh, the kind of little relationships that form between them. Right, and they solidified those relationships in those web rings, which were often, like, advertised at the bottom of the page, be like, I'm in this web ring. Click the left button to see another site like mine. Or you would have a links page that you could go to on your web page to just see some useful links there. Um. And in our... In our um, archaeological dig into the ancient web, those have proved to be incredibly useful, as well as the, like, my favorite software tab, where they'll have, like, version 1.0 of, like, ICQ or something. They're like, I love this chat program. You should download it. You got some version of something that hasn't been updated for a hundred years. As I uh, observed, ICQ is great, because it, it was a chat program that looked like a GeoCities web page. Right. It was the geocities of uh, of web, uh, which which reminds me, um, we've got our Homo Vulgaris Discord channel, which is which is going strong, getting a lot of people in there. Uh, some some fans showed up with unpronounceable names, so big shout out to guy whose name I can't say. Um, hi, but yeah, dude, yeah, the, like the, the poster formerly known as something. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't he doesn't have a name. Uh, and we, we got a few other people in there, and you can always stop by and uh, talk to us about uh, things you enjoy and see. But, uh, well, I say that, but uh, I'm heavily considering shutting down the Discord channel in favor of Microsoft Comic Chat. Oh, you can no, it's Comic doing. Chat in the yeah. Discord. Oh, we can? We can There's we can... a bot that does that. I've seen it. Yeah? All right. We got to yeah. install that bot. We need, we need a, we need a sub-channel where we can do the Microsoft Comic Chat. Oh, uh, 
I'll talk to someone about figuring out how to do that. Right. Uh, for those of you who happen. don't know what it is, if you've ever seen a webcomic called, what is it, Jerk City, Jerk Zone? Jerk City, yeah. Jerk City. Um, it was a, it was an uh, internet chat overlay where it turned the chat room into a comic strip, and you could control your comic character uh, and pose it in different ways and put different expressions on, and then type it in, and it looked like a comic strip. And yeah, so, it was like a bunch of different... It's sort of like paper dolls, almost. You could be like, here's this character who's got, like, he looks kind of like, I guess, like a French hipster or something. He's got, like, a beanie. He's smoking a Right. And there's a tiki man. Glasses. Yeah. And then you can, an a space alien, you can, like, make him smile or frown or make it sort of, like, shrugging or just standing there. Right. Uh, and then it makes little word bubbles with their chat. And it's, like, it's, like it's pretty crude by modern standards, but it's one of those, like, ideas of making online interaction like more kind of visual and i guess like creative and not just utilitarian that never got explored that much um, right like like outside of stuff like maybe second life com. yeah you can argue that it's the original second life in a way yeah it, or well stuff no like there that. was i mean there's Wow. There was one before that. I'm trying to remember what it was. It was it was it was back in the ages of dial ups and amigas and stuff like that. And it was a real digital world. I'm struggling for the name here, where you know you put together an avatar and they had chat rooms in the sense that there was like uh you you'd move your avatar into this two dimensional thing that looked like a beach or a bar and you'd be connected to the internet and someone else would be there. I kind of I don't think about what that was called. Arcadia? Yeah, Google that up. I'm trying to... Uh, yeah, Arcadia was an original one. There was a bunch of those, like, that kind of sprung up around the same time out of this sort of, like, more forum-based um, game thing, like, something like Neopets or whatever, and it had just, like, these little characters that you could actually move around in real time and talk to people, and there was a bunch of them that all came up in the early 2000s, mid-2000s. This was done by Lucasfilms. Um, and it was called Habitat. Yes, it was called Habitat. I remember that. Yeah, and it was uh, no, there was something before this. Crud, I should think about it. But but yeah, it was it was back in the the um, as early as 1985. Yeah, yeah, and and it was it was really really a crude. You should Google up some images. You guys and I'm only computers are they're really really crude like eight bit stuff. If you can find pictures, of oh those. yeah, it's, it's really quick. Hang on. very much like uh, something you you might see on an original NES, almost. Right. Well, and and the 1998 version was even cruder. Uh, they kept updating it for a while, but eventually it um, died out. And the avatars you could customize it, and you chat it like 144 characters at a time. Really crazy stuff, and I bet there's still a server. That's the thing we've all we've been doing all this digging, and we're always finding a server out there somewhere that's still active. Yeah, every seemingly totally forgotten internet community, every old online game, there is still some tiny cult out there keeping it alive to this day somewhere, using hacks and workarounds to host their own servers, um, cool. like. Or yeah, even like Ultima or um, EverQuest worlds, right? Or even just in some uh, badly SEO'd, no spider bots web 1.0 community that's still barely clinging on. Um, I wish Megan was here. I heard she was on last episode, and I missed out on that because I was sick. But she's been yeah, showing us that. around uh, the Pixel Dolls community. You know that was the that was the thing you would put on your MySpace, which was like a little brat's doll that would say something like "sassy" or something like that. You know, or you really really zing it to you. And again, you had to choose one because <laughs> you couldn't load more than three of those on a page. Um, apparently, there are people that still make those. I, I imagine like most of those people are probably must be like pretty old by now. And I think it's one of those things where people just kind of get stuck, stuck, stuck. You know, if, if whatever works, works. You well, know? it was fun in doing it. And speaking of old games, uh, currently right now, I'm playing Fantasy Star Online. You know, on that, the Dreamcast. Yeah, that game's pushing 20, eh? Something like 15 years, 17 years old. 17 years old. 17-year-old game made for the Dreamcast. Still heck of fun. Still has a server population of about 200. 
two hundred people are still playing this this game that kids that were born when it came out could go and enlist in the army. Right, right, and and some of them still haven't done everything they want to do in that game. They're still not at the level cap, or they still don't have that rare item they've been looking for all this time. It's a trip. One had it's kind of neat that something inspires so much love that people keep it alive after all this time. And on the other hand, it's just like, hey man, they've made other video games in the last um, uh, generation. Right, Fantasy yeah. Star is kind of great too. You well, Fantasy Star is kind of actually unique in that situation because yes, they have made new games, but they really weren't that great. So um, you might really I like Fantasy Star, of them. but Fantasy Star um, Universe wasn't that awesome. So what is a cyber primitivist? Is it people like you guys who study these defunct online communities, or is it the people who are still keeping them alive? Uh, I think it's the people that still keep them alive. I think they're, they're the, the cyber primitivists. If you look at that dolls thing, uh, one of the things I loved about their form um, is that under their little avatar they have their bio, and it describes the medium they like to work in, whether that be like pixel dolls or uh or or like ms paint dolls and then they tell the tools that they use with some people would install old versions of ms paint because that's what they felt more comfortable with they're the ones keeping the the data alive they're the ones keeping their websites up and yeah they're the, restores right right they're the they're the ones that are engaged in this and when we play those old games we're the ones that engage in it um I know that there's still like a small community somewhere out there that's like keeps the Amiga operating system running. Oh, good lord! And distributes it. Wow. Um, I guess so. People can um, still use the best paint type program ever, which was Deluxe Paint on the Amiga. Right. I, that's the only reason I can think of. Um, or like an old, maybe you have an old, maybe you have a very old license for video toaster. Right. Well, and I'm sure, I'm sure there's people that have dial up BBSs that are still active. Um, probably, probably out there. How do you um, even connect that? Like, you, well, you, you, you have to go dial them up. You, you know that number and you dial it up and you connect to their server. I mean, like, like say you wanted to go and find one of those, like you'd have to like go and like buy all of this like equipment from somewhere. To hook up to uh to manually dial up through a phone line. Maybe. Well, you mean, might be able to no reach it through an IP, but I'm not sure. But still, like uh one of the videos I watched this week was a guy who showed one of the world's first modems that was designed for like internet like test things. And it was a completely uh almost completely analog in the sense that it had two modes, on and off. So you put the phone on it. And it made, uh, okay, so you plugged it into your computer, um, and it just made a tone. It just made a, uh, you know, like a horrible tone. And then you put your phone on it in the cradle, and it turned the tone off. And then you dialed up using your phone. You dialed up what you wanted to connect to. Yeah, like, like in war games. Right. Um, but the it was literally a valve. It was literally an analog air valve that just made a uh, sound. And then... So its default was off, and then on was just the sound. And it was literally sending bytes of data on, off, on, off, on, off, zero, one, zero, one, at the speed of sound. It was just like beep, 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 beep. That's the first one. Yeah. Dude, the, the internet now, compared to the pre-internet networking computing then, is like... Um, it's like hard to even think of a comparison. It's like I was I was gonna say um, like car and horse and buggy, but no horse and no. buggy is just like the internet with like dial up in the in the in the in the late nineties. Actually, this is a, good, like, a good uh, comparison is actually um, the the horse to the bicycle, 
owning a horse requires a lot of care. You have to have land for the horse to live on. You have to be a rancher. You have to be like, you have to know horses. You have to be able to take care of a whole living thing and understand or pay someone to take care of that horse for you. So you either have to be smart enough to own a horse and have your own land or rich enough to pay someone to take care of a horse for you. Yeah, Owning but if like... Oh, was a big but, deal. But if like a horse was like slow... They were kind of <laughs> But compared to a bicycle? Eh, um, but what I'm saying with the bicycle is anyone could save up a month's wages and buy a bicycle. And you didn't uh, necessarily have to uh, prepare it. No, it's it's one of the things I studied during university. It was a huge cultural revolution because people lived in these small little communities and you maybe didn't have a horse or something like that. But if you could get your hands on a bicycle, you could bike to the next town over and you can meet a group of people that you've never met before and that they know nothing about you. And then you could fuck their daughters. I, no, no, I no, never no. thought about you're right. I never thought about that before. Right, and that's and that's actually, and I and I, I was being vulgar there, but that's actually one of the biggest cultural revolution that diversified our gene pool was allowing the common man enough mobility to transport himself into a completely new community and meet someone who didn't know your family, didn't know your parents, didn't know how rich you were. You have a few drinks. See where that goes, and next thing you know, you've got people interbreeding that would have never interbred before. That's crazy. I've never thought of it like that before. Right, right. So the uh, the th that is kind of like the internet now and then. Like and I the mean, internet. Imagine how much faster information would travel. Right. No, and then well, uh, the information in that, like, I guess, uh, in a different way, in the kind of like cultural information, and the like. Oh, you are hanging out with this guy now. Like before. You know, like it wasn't that long ago where a lot of the time you'd get news of events just kind of coming down the grapevine through like your community. Like the guy might uh, guy might bring milk on his bicycle to the next town over to sell, and then he'll be like, "Oh, did you hear about the king? He died." Right. And then, like, he'll I tell mean, that, that, that happened with it. merchants with horses, but but now you're getting the common dude coming, and so instead exactly. of talking instead of talking about kings. Um, Instead of talking about kings and business and trade, he's like, hey, dude, you know what I really like? I like smoking this brand of cigarettes that your town doesn't have. And, and they, you know, like they found out something like that or like just dumb little cultural things like uh, my town believes a stupid ghost lives up on the hill. What does your town believe in? Well, all of it, yeah. And I mean, like, yeah. it would have impacted how just geographically can use like i mean you look at north america especially the western part how differently um communities are laid out and how differently they're spaced and right. in density and it's all because um there was something uh, these, valuable in that area that people settled down around well not there's that but the um a lot of the settlements which formed or at least which grew in the the, the colonial era in western north america developed relatively recently and so they developed in an era where you had um you know railroads and right. um bicycles and river steamboats and things and then you know the development of the automobile not that that long after so that's how you ended up with these you, you know like you, you like, like even you just look on maps and in movies and stuff in like cities in europe seem mm -hmm. different cities in asia seem different even cities on the east coast a bit seem different in how they're laid out and how dense they are and how close they are to each other like on the east coast of the united states you've got all of these giant cities that are all like to me practically right next to each other mm -hmm. whereas like the nearest if you go out here and uh you get in an accident on the boonies you have to drive two hours to find a hospital yeah right. there's like you know you've got one major city and then just every like maybe half hour to an hour on the main road, you'll have like a town or a village in these kind of long spokes with just huge swaths of nothing between them. Whereas like you look in Europe and it's like every, every couple miles, there's a distinct village. 
And in those places, every single one of those villages that are like a stone's throw from each other will have like completely different cultures and traditions and everything. Whereas here, you have this, uh, it was, I mean, it was, it would have been like that back before European settlement, probably with the indigenous peoples. But now you've got this just kind of sprawl, like where I live. Well, I mean, the larger hey, that, sense of community extends for like a 500 kilometer stretch of highway, but that's that all goes kind back of to, to what we were talking about the the uh, cyber primitivism and the the web circles. The web circles, and you said this earlier, were like those villages. You stuck with yeah. your tribe, and and as technology advanced, as we got our little bicycles and steamboats and high speed internet, we uh, started having the, like these less tiny villages and just started going everywhere. On Back making... in my day, the anime web turnpike was practically yes, like, like a home address. Cyber right. con concentration, like populations well, concentrate in cities, and then I've got cyber populations concentrating on these large networks. Shogs brings up uh, something that uh, that's uh, completely anachronistic now. My homepage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's a homepage? Remember when we had like more of a sense of idea? I mean, it's it's I guess as the internet There's becomes that. more of the the focal point of our culture, then I mean, cities don't organize around shared interests. So why should internet inhabitation? Yeah, I like I I do miss um, things about, and I mean I don't even remember the old old internet like the nineties. I wasn't really online much i was just a kid but like even just the the 2000s if if you know, you know when social media was hadn't quite moved from being like a closed off ecosystem yet or uh, when it when it was first getting started you had a kind of it was, it was less centralized sure sure and, i i always i always uh, just think about it as uh in terms of the americas expanding west the the early internet was completely lawless and also yeah pretty shitty because you couldn't get any nice things out there. So like I was saying, your homepage, you knew your little homepage, you didn't have much hosting for it, you wrote it in Notepad because that's all you had back in the day, and you got to choose that one or two good gifts. Like, you, you might have found a bunch Under of good gifts, but you got you to just, you know you can only afford to use one really good gift in your whole website, so you got to really... Really think of it, and then as technology expanded, and the internet connection bigger, and your little western town got built up by prostitutes or what have you, you're like, oh, now my homepage can have five gifts, and these I choose I choose an anime banner that says no nudes, no hentai, and then I also choose you know like a Harry Potter like flashing banner that with lightning bolt, and I'm feeling pretty good about that because I couldn't have had that two years ago. I'd go with the red anarchy symbol and the skull with the fire on top of it, and both of them are rotating. Yeah, no, I, I, and you can come to my place and you can download a text file of the Anarchist Cookbook by the Jolly Roger, and you can blow your hands off, and you're gonna have a great time. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna opt for um, the alien dancing gif, oh, but yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mirror it. I'm gonna, it's gonna be the same gif, but I'm gonna use HTML to mirror it several times. And Wait, you are going to so be, it looks like it. So it looks like it's dancing with itself, right? Or a large uh, group of aliens are dancing, and then uh, there's going to be a MIDI that auto plays that is the X Files theme song, and you're going to yes. be able to read about my experiences with, um, you know, extraterrestrials. I read one time that uh, if you go <coughs> to disc two of Final Fantasy VII and you go to the kingdom, uh, the city of the ancients, and if you stand down there by that fish for 23 hours he'll say what the fuck's wrong with you Eris is dead go throw this game away right uh i'm gonna i'm gonna link to your video games uh tips page in my Thank about you. section uh yeah i think that's a valuable thing to know i haven't played that game but i'm going to circulate that rumor because it sounds like something that i could only learn on the internet Please do, and visit my homepage, hojo.net. Uh, we have a forum where you can Not replace Angel, Final Fantasy. Geosite, Angel no. Fire. No, we sprung yeah. for the domain name. And uh, oh, maybe you can come over to my place sometime, and I can explain how you're soul bonded to Final Fantasy Did VII you know characters. That there's a cheat code where you can make the Tomb Raider in Tomb Raider naked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Plus you got like you, six polygons like, on those tits. Yeah, like I'm gonna have to. Yeah, like I'm gonna have to use one of my gift. The triangles are beige. 
Oh. <laughs> That's how you can tell. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to allocate one of my gifts to some flashing sirens, and we're gonna have an NSFW, and we're gonna link to your page there. But yeah. don't click on that if you're not 18. Yeah, um, my homepage will just basically be something that really should have a seizure warning on it. In, yeah. Indecipherable shapes and words, but should definitely be uh, regulated by the FDA. Sure. What, what, are you, what are you selling on your homepage? You, you mean, got some hot animes I should check out, or maybe some opinions on, uh, I don't know, Bill Clinton? Um, some pretty weird opinions on Bill Clinton. Yeah, that's most of it. Um, Monica Lewinsky. It's a Mon Monica Lewinsky fan page mostly. Um, but also epilepsy medication. I'm I'm selling that as a in a sort of okay. snake oil salesman kind of way. I need I need you to host a Java based game where I can dress up Monica Lewinsky. Wait, are you making this homepage on a, on a on a Linux machine? Are you using Micro Sucks Wind Blows? So I got this picture <laughs> on my computer where I took the Microsoft logo and I replaced the S with a dollar sign. <laughs> oh wow! How, how many kilobytes is that? Uh, about about twenty six. It's a, it's a pretty big image, two eighty oh. by two eighty. You might just have to like put a link to that and be like, "Funny pick, click here." And then we can load it. You know, if our machine not, can handle it. Not fifty six k. I okay. made a Doom watch yeah. where you're the Linux penguin, and all the humans have Bill Gates' face. Oh yeah. Oh, oh wow. man, we can't get one. that. Yeah. It's yeah. also got a MIDI version of Pantera's Cowboy from Hell, but only like a 10 second loop. So that's all I can fit on my bandwidth. So it just plays over and over again the riff from Cowboys from Hell. <laughs> just the riff. <laughs> oh, no, that's fantastic. <laughs> Well, you know, anyway. we make fun of it, but it's better because back in the Web 1.0 days, uh, they didn't have things like hashtags to try and socially motivate you. Companies didn't really know how to use the internet or social media no, or to do... tracking your analytics. Oh, yeah. You know, um... Pepsi didn't know that you were interested in the activities of the president and that perhaps that could be parlayed into you <laughs> buying a can of Pepsi. And right. if you're, if you, you know, so there, if you're an activist type, you know, what do you respect when you, you're an activist type, you know, you go to, you go to protests, you, you direct uh, action. You kind of acts, uh, you kind of uh, one of those people that, that, that really cares about, you know, social issues and you want to make a difference. You, um, you post a lot of links to think pieces on your Facebook. You might have read some G Jack. So who's going to, who's going to speak to you? Who is oh, that's going to be a Kardashian. Wanna... That's got to be a yeah. Kardashian. That's, 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 that's my mouthpiece right there. Hey. I, that's what I was thinking too. Which is really scary. What happens when one of the soda companies gets smart enough to get Zizek to sell their Coke? Uh, he do it. Uh, yeah, he might be selling Coke, but I don't think he'd be selling cola. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the soda can is representative of the, the capitalist practice. Uh, that, fuck that. But uh, yeah, so in case anybody doesn't know, we're talking about this horrible new Pepsi ad that's uh, making the waves on the internet as of today. We're hopping on a on a trend like the day it happened. You know, oh, you'll yeah. hear about it next week. But yeah, no, when we upload this, it'll be dated. Yeah, but yeah, you know, by the time you hear this, Coke's gonna come out with a competing ad where they just like hang a bunch of Mexicans from a wall. And, and the <laughs> redneck drinks a coke or something, or the, like a they kick a they kick a trans person out of a out of the bathroom they chose to went to, and then they celebrate right. with a coke. Ted Nugent will hand the guy the the sad uh, trans person a coke, and then kick him down a flight of stairs. I got it. I got it. Okay, so there's this this family. They're really like white. One of their kids is really effeminate and and fey. And, and Santa's coming, and he's bringing presents. And the, the other kids leave a coke out, cokes out for Santa. And the, the little gay kid, he leaves a he leaves milk and cookies out for no, he leaves a a, a, a thing of lipstick out for Santa. And Santa <laughs> comes and kicks his ass over the wall into Mexico, and and takes the Medicare away from everybody. 
Well, and then and then the polar bears come and eat. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yes, bears. like in the Bible. And then they drink it down. And they, they're covered with his blood, and they just have a coke to wash it down. I'm really excited for the hyper ideological soda wars of the, <laughs> oh, the twentieth of this period. Uh, nothing could discredit any of the ruling ideologies better, I don't think. So, I mean, one thing that I think is interesting is this ad didn't work. No. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't think it was designed to work. That's, that's the reason. It I mean, was designed talking... to provoke people, but I think they expected someone to take their side. Like, I think there's, like, I don't. honestly, it seems like the impact is that fewer people are ultimately going to want to buy Pepsi drinks. We were talking about this earlier. I completely, I completely disagree. I, I think from the outset this was designed to provoke and that they're just they're just like literally there's nothing about this that like makes any sense from a standpoint where uh someone involved in activism would look at this and go oh yeah that reflects me because even yes, if yes, it was made by people who have no fucking clue yeah it's made I'm, by but, advertisers like the third even, stupidest class of people in the world but no, they, they, they still exist in this world, and they have some idea of the basic dynamic of a protest, where the protesters are often adversarial to police. And in this cartoon, the uh, cartoon, yeah, it is cartoon. But it, it is a cartoon. It is cartoon. Yeah. It, in this advertisement, she gives a Pepsi to the cops, and the cop was like, "Hey, not bad. What do you think, and, guys? You let these protesters? Ah, now nah, fuck it, stay over there." Like, and then uh, everybody clapped. Right, literally. right. It's like literally, literally not... then everybody claps. Then if, everybody claps. Like, if, like, if the commercial so kept going for fifteen seconds, you get to the part where the cops, after enjoying their coke, just turn around and just shoot all the protesters. Right, with proper it, bullets, your gas. It's so designed to be like. Um, it's obvious. It was obviously to me. To me, I think they were just obviously going to be like, let's stir some shit because because no one's gonna gonna have anything good to say about this even the people that are like um the kind of people that see a protest and automatically back the police and complain about protesters they're gonna watch this and be like fuck that i hate protesters and there's no way a cop would ever take a drink from a protester that's stupid here's the like, weird thing though to me i don't like i i really don't see how this ultimately benefits Pepsi that much. I mean, everyone already knows who Pepsi are. There's nothing, there's no awareness yeah, to be yeah, Why are these companies still running ads? Uh, that was, Co that was Coke is the Trump card. Like, if um, the exposure that these companies have is so massive that there isn't a person on earth that doesn't know about Coke or Pepsi. There's not a single person on earth that doesn't know that isn't, um, you know, part of some tribe that doesn't have electricity yet. That, like, that's what makes even me they like, have gotten Coca Cola from the fucking like humanitarian relief guys have come over and give them a free Coke shirt. I think these guys legitimately thought they put out this ad, or so someone did. Someone legitimately thought, and someone else just thought they'd exploit that naivety or ignorance. No, somewhere I, I, along I, the chain, oh, yeah. people believed that this would make them look like the 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 with it progressive in the vaguest possible the, sense the, Pepsi the company woke Pepsi company more like I mean, woke a cola you guys that yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. thing that's the, that's the you know like Trump is enormously unpopular all of this far right stuff is not with the cultural zeitgeist in terms of like marketing to the youth and everything so that's where they're going they're like Bernie Sanders. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that's you said Tim. I haven't. I haven't heard Tim Heidecker's take on it, but it sounds like from what you told me earlier that our take is the same. This was designed to be offensive. This was designed to be shitty and poor. They know what they're doing. They've got us talking about it, and that's all they wanted. But the but, thing is, like to me, that benefits like that benefits websites with takes on it and pop culture vultures like us but um i don't see what it ultimately does like i like i don't know like i don't think any more people are going to be buying pepsi cola because of this but even if so, pepsi put out an ad where um like let's just think of a pepsi ad uh well, let's say they did another pepsi man you know who pepsi man is pepsi man. fuck yeah, yeah pepsi, pepsi man, man. Pepsi Everybody man. in our audience knows who Pepsi Man is. Pepsi man. Right, Pepsi Man. Pepsi man. 
was an obscure Japanese commercial where uh, a fat dude was thirsty and he needed someone to give him a Pepsi and this man dressed in a silver bodysuit exploded out of his TV to a cheap-ass theme song that went, Pepsi Man! Pepsi Man! And delivered this guy a Pepsi and that was his superpower, was to be able to procure Pepsis for people that had thirst. All right. Jesus, like, he'd been there for poor Mike. Yeah. Like, this... Is, let's say they did that. They brought back Pe Pepsi Man. Pepsi Man. That's not going to sell, sell many more Pepsis. What if, like, what if they did an ad with Pepsi Man? Pepsi Man. Shot a cop and then had a Pepsi. <laughs> what if it doesn't <laughs> matter if they sell more Pepsis? What if these... What if, what if the people that make this stuff are so hung up just on the idea of attention because that in and of itself is a commodity. That's what I'm that, saying. That's what I'm yeah. saying. That but is what are, I'm saying. They, they, I think they got the wrong idea because they're like, you know, oh, all press is good press. It's like, no, not if the press is like, yeah, hey, see these people? They're dumb shits and I hate them. Not, it's like, man, they're really talking about us, aren't they? Uh, it's like, yeah, but they're well, all I mad they at might you. I don't know about that, Trog. I think and not a product. Like, I just don't think it sells more Pepsi. After, after, at a certain level. Once you anymore. reach, once you read a Pepsi's level, once you read a McDonald's level, once you reach the Oreo level, all press does become good press. They are too big to fail. Nothing's going to take down Pepsi unless we discover they've been giving us arsenic this whole time. Like, oh, that wouldn't stop. Like we find out all the time that, that like major companies like have poison or some horrible thing in the food. Nobody stops. Exactly. No one gives a shit. It's horse meat at McDonald's, and everybody's like, "It's fine, tastes pretty good, I guess." It's like, Pe yeah. Pepsi I mean. could like do a commercial where Pepsi Man, Pepsi Man appears in space and squats over America and shits out a giant <laughs> red, white, and blue turd <laughs> on top of America, and people would be, people would still buy <laughs> Pepsi, like. Any, any more Pepsi. I think that's the real horror of this thing is ultimately all of this advertising stuff I don't think really matters. I think the whole idea that these that big ad campaigns make that big of a difference is kind of a myth. Like I think ultimately, like the people that spend millions and millions of dollars on like YouTube ads and banner ads and shit, at some point they're gonna realize they're not getting anything out of it, and the bubble's gonna pop. And I'm well, no, they're getting exactly the what they need about uh, from it. They're getting they're getting people talking about Pepsi, and uh, frankly, let let's consider something today. I had a pretty good day at work. Um, and I came home, and I was hoping we'd do a podcast today, and I was hoping to talk to you about things. The last thing a week ago I would have talked about on this show would have been Pepsi. I would have not talked about <laughs> That's it. true. That's yeah, a good-ass point. No one's going to buy it because we did. But we're not you know, trying. I... People are going to buy our product anyways. We're not trying to get people to buy our product. We're trying to get people to get uh, people to have discussions about our product. Yeah, yeah, it's but dumb, it's not. But it worked. No re That's the idea. But there's no. But there's no return on it. They're pouring the, the resources they pour into this don't come back. The return they, on they it is that Pepsi remains a cultural standby. That they don't become an RC Cola. That people are just like it's just another soft drink. No, are you talking Pepsi, shit about RC Cola, dude? Because I'm drinking I'm, RC Cola right now. I am talking shit about RC Cola. Now, when you came into this podcast, you knew you were going to talk about Pepsi. You had ideas. You had things formulated about your stance on Pepsi. But you were completely unprepared to have a discussion with me about RC Cola. Because they aren't making news. Well, like let's give them some news. You know, it's 99 cents for a two liter of RC Cola. And the the, the uh, convenience store near me has something I'd never seen before I moved down here to Southern Indiana, which is RC Cola in the Coke fountain. Yeah, they, they, their fountain's weird. They don't have Coke or Pepsi there. They're, they have RC Cola, uh, okay. fresh orange soda, a right. local beverage called Ski, uh, oh. red soda, and root beer. Okay, wait. Uh, what is ski? Ski's hard to explain. Is it it's, a clear or a dark soda? It's a yellow soda. It's a kind of like a, it's a lemon lime kind of citrus soda. It leans a little more towards the orangey side. It's got orange in it, and it has pulp. It's a pulpy orange soda. Ooh, what? Good what? lord, pulp <laughs> <and> soda. <laughs> pretty good actually. What barbaric country do we live in that there is pulp and soda? 
Oh. Like, no, it's cool, man. It's, and, it's healthier for you. It's so, like all right, juice. <laughs> I'm at your... <laughs> it's curative. I'm at your godforsaken feudal age mini mart. Oh, Looking yeah, I'll your... run out of cigarettes every fucking week. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at your soda fountain, and I am hankering for a, a clear and crisp kind of refreshing <laughs> beverage. What does this fountain have to offer me? Water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm taking the water. Uh, hey, we, got, we got orange, we got yellow, we got brown, we got red, <laughs> but we don't have <laughs> nothing don't... clear. There's no, there's no like Sprite or Mountain Dew. I mean, you've had. They don't, I don't remember seeing any red pop when I was out in Oregon. Do you guys yeah, have- we had, we had a crush occasionally. Um, and then Mountain Dew would, would put out something horrible every now and then. That's like we put red dye in this. No, no, it's totally different. Red, red pop's kind of like a cream soda, but a little different. It's a. Uh... I actually really like cream soda. It's been a long time yeah, since I had one. Cream soda's fucking right. great. Right. I am, I'm enjoying this conversation much, much more than the But Pepsi. Um, I should just... the Sugar Water Power Hour. Here's all of our favorite sugar waters. Go buy them. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't drink a soda, but I drink a lot of sparkling wine. So I don't know if that counts. I mean, well, I does, does it come in a can? Do they serve canned sparkling wine? It comes in a bottle. They really should. Yeah. They really should for the... The socialite on the go. <laughs> Six pack of wine. I refuse to drink anything that doesn't come out of a can. You know, yeah. it's the only way to be sure. Right, right. Uh, when the nukes but, drop, where where your bottle is going to be shattered. That's where. Yeah. yeah two dude. other things. Uh, Pepsi. Pepsi knows that the revolution's coming, and they know they're not currently uh, positioned to be the soda of the revolution. That is Fago. Oh, Everybody sing. Sing your mama straight up to the snow. We was butt naked all over the floor. It felt weird though, cause we was at the Fago stand. And come with a hat full of tricks, truck full of Fago, car full of fat chicks. And a little sip of Fago too. No water, it's Fago. I said Fago, fuck Mountain Dew. Till I get my shit, shit this month, oh my god, I won't never die. Because yeah. the Juggalos will be the, <laughs> uh, the they will be the front line. We're, it's certainly we're gonna send them in as like the revolution. Yeah, they're they're gonna be the pe- the ones we send in first. That they will suffer the greatest casualties, but we will make fantastic memorials to them. <laughs> Can you imagine? They're 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 there in their full baggy regalia, <laughs> holding up like a flag, and then there's like another one, and he's leaning against the first one, which is propping up the flag. It's kind of like the Vietnam memorial, but instead of like. Pushing, we're leaning and doing that like homie back to back thing. <laughs> yeah, and instead of fatigues, they're wearing jinkos and hoods. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's... <laughs> Covered in medals. Yeah, a generation after the revolution, they're going to do uh, uh, an update of what the day the clown cried. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's fantastic. But, uh... Also, uh, the, the, the skeleton key to that ad is in the sign that shows up the most time, which just says, join the conversation, oh, hashtagable, and it allows them to get away with uh, having this, this demonstration that doesn't demonstrate anything. Or is that, that isn't at all violent. The, the demonstration is not at all a reaction or trying to, like, change anything. It's like, hey, we're out in the street and we just want to talk to you. It looks like people doing, like, a fun run for breast cancer. (laughs) Yeah, the street musicians and... Just uh, the the prime liberal protest. Hey, buddy, you want to talk about the vast gap in equality and how we're being exploited? Oh, oh, no, you don't want to talk about... That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Dead. Millions of people are dying around the world so that that rich guy can sell you a bunch (laughs) of shit that you don't need... And that you could have just made in your own country, Do you, but if you really wanted to, if you don't want to talk about that, that's fine. You, you can join the conversation if you like, but it's you join know the we, we, we just want to talk about it. Oh, I, I <laughs> apparently the, like the um, administration has been getting really belligerent. By the way, the 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 Trump 
cluster of like I don't even want to call it a government. It's just like a, a, a gaggle. I'd rather uh, I'd rather talk was. about uh, the uh, signing where he walked into the room. He said one crazy thing. He's like, "The country's in shambles. We're gonna get the jobs back. It's gonna be great." And then he walks out of the room, and Pence is like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> "You were supposed to assign some executive. You know what? I'm just gonna pick him up and bring him with me." But I, I think they're gonna start a war. You yeah, know, it's it's an old move, you know, like to try and get like a quick easy war to boost your popularity, like a like a Kosovo intervention or a, a, a desert desert storm, uh, Gulf War one. But uh, I think they might try and start a war because they recently just like said some really belligerent shit about North Korea and uh, and Syria. Man, they're they're done. I'm I'm feel bad. Leave North Korea alone. Yeah, we'd be really dumb to start a war in North Korea because that would one, be really they, stupid. They can barely menace Seoul, and like North Korea, well, the landscape of Korea is built in such a way where Seoul is like almost like at sea level, I believe, and the across the border, across the DMZ, they have all these mountains where they've ranged all this artillery, and if they weren't incredibly rotten from disrepair from sitting there since the Soviets left them there, it would actually pose a threat. They could just wipe the capital of South Korea off the map, but they yeah. can't even manage that. And they, so, but they can still kill a lot of people. But the thing is, like a war in, like it's the war in North Korea itself that would be insanely destructive. It'd kill a lot of people, and it would be a long, protracted fight because those guys have spent like fifty years. No, it's not gonna be a long fight. What's gonna happen is, is the soldiers are gonna ro roll into Pyongyang to, 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 you know, do the, do their liberating. And then, um, then uh, the fat retard that runs that country, as opposed to the fat retard that runs this country, will just. Uh, I, I figure they'd just wait till the soldiers are in, then nuke the city. It's God. I, I think that not, like, I really whatever I really... happens, the the citizens of North Korea are going to be by far the ones who suffer the most, oh, and not like the largest are. scale. North Korea barely poses a threat to South Korea at this point. So starting a war with them is like it's like picking on the special kid. Like, North, North Korea already is a special kid. It's out there in the playground, and it's like, I'm gonna punch you, I got nukes, and you're like, yeah, 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 whatever. You know, you just just go over there and do your thing. Yeah, there's, there's just no point, except that saber-rattling serves... Well, I mean, honestly, it, it kind of goes both ways, in that it serves um, the powerful interests on both sides to have some, some bad guy to distract with, but I mean, there's just no point... Uh, Fighting with North Korea would be like they're, punching they're down, They're in no though. position to invade the South, so there's really, like, nothing to really fear from them. I mean, it sucks that they have all these humanitarian atrocities, but a war would just be throwing another atrocity on the atrocity pile. Right. That That's, that's like, the, the lesson we should take from Iraq and Vietnam. Well, and the last time, yeah, we were in that, Vietnam. I mean, because these things were never really about humanitarianism but like we should have learned at this point that it's not a good excuse that right i would feel so <laughs> bad because north korea north korea is it's so it's it's the kid on the playground who's got issues and they're they're saying they're gonna be yeah and a gun and but the gun's not loaded and it's old I mean, and rusty really not that different from a lot of other countries I guess it's it's he's it. They love to tell everyone on the playground they're gonna get nukes. They're gonna come back to well. They don't have a gun. They don't have a gun. They're telling everyone on the playground. My dad has a gun at home, and I'm gonna bring it to school tomorrow. And we're like, God, North Korea, stop! Don't don't do that. That's screwed up. But they really don't have a gun at home, and they just keep saying it over and over again. And then what are we going to do? Punch them in the nose? Like, There's just no point. Honestly, at the end of the day, I think if... Cause I mean, ultimately, what, what do we want here, right? Like, the United States to basically stop fucking with the rest of the world and mind its own business, you know? Well, that would be... Which isn't the same the, as isolationism, but... Well, no, but see, that know, would still be one of the advantages, like, like, silver linings of a possible... Well, not a possible, but a possible silver lining of a Trump presidency is if he did go back to actual isolationism and pulled us out of all these places, that wouldn't be the worst thing. It'd give us a no, new baseline I, to start from, I guess. It right. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be like, 
I wouldn't be like, wow, that's, I went, okay, I would say that's stupid, but I wouldn't be like, there are worse things to do with our armed forces than pull out and become isolationists. But I think, like, you know, it's it's fairly, like, I don't think Trump is really committed to anything, so I think it's just the people around them, they're going to go, oh, unpopular president, we want a war, and they're, I don't, like, I don't know if they'll actually invade North Korea, but, I mean, like, something like Syria or Iran. They're going to invade somewhere. Syria. My hope is, though, like, I don't think there's much appetite in the population for a war. Like, even on the right, I don't think they really want an actual war that bad. I think they're more interested in keeping people out than going and spending more resources and lives. I don't know. There there is a big jingoist contingent, but I think, like, you look at how unpopular Trump is already, I don't think a war is going to gain him support in this climate after... There's already so much war fatigue from the with all the aggression towards Muslims, you could you could get away with a war in a Middle Eastern country pretty easily because Muslims and Americans have been some cases a war can increase the president's popularity. We've also said so much like weird propaganda about North Korea over the years that people be down for it because they just feel they believe everything they hear about it. So I don't know. I think I, I I think we're in a different circumstance here. I think the the cumulative war fatigue doesn't make that under a di- like under a different president maybe but i mean like i don't think trump could sell it either to the people who don't already agree with him he'd have to have someone write his scripts and he's bad at doing that like i just I, at, I, I like I, that he's bad at other, having other people do things i see it back he can't even read a fucking script that someone like hands him he has to go off script at some <laughs> point I think, I mean, I mean, I know, like, you can't, you, I mean, take it worth a grain of salt, but, like, I do find it plausible that maybe he's sort of like Reagan was, and but more so, maybe he's a bit uh, addled up in the noodle. Yeah, um, and I think he's, that's he's a, got all his shit I mean, I remember, I read this, this thing, this, I don't even remember which magazine it was, but this was, like, an article from way before, from back in the 90s, and it was a, a the writer describing how they were riding with Trump on his private jet, and he had, um, one of his creepy uh, Patrick Bateman with Innsmouth face sons with him. And he was watching, he was trying to watch something that was like some contemporary prestige drama. He got bored, popped it out, <laughs> put on Bloodsport, and then had his kid fast forward through all the dialogue just to the action scenes. Yeah, um, I heard about that. I don't believe that, but if it was true, that would be a positive thing to me because I love Bloodsport. What a great movie. But he, didn't even, he didn't even watch all of it. He just fast forwarded to the parts he liked. I mean, he's probably this, seen it. This he's is, probably this seen it before, guys. Probably true. the nineties before, before there was like a political. He knows the plot. He knows the, the stakes. He just wants to see that final scene with all the screaming. I, I, I don't see any flaw in that. Like, <laughs> people go way too far out of their way to demonize Trump. I, if any other person on earth watched only the action parts of Bloodsport, I'd be like, awesome. Great. It's just combined with all the other weird shit about him. His weird hair, his weird relationship with Ivanka, his weird, like, obsession with the news and what people say about him, his inability oh, to, like, step out from behind the TV. That, that is some... I, I, oh, uh, like, I, I've said it before, I think, like, um, with him and his daughter, mm-hmm. like, I, I think, I think... I know. <laughs> Well, hey, uh, if you want uh, more political discourse, you're welcome to join us on the Discord if that's what you want to hear from us. The discourse. You, the, the discourse yeah. on Discord. Join our Trump coming <laughs> channel. And, uh, right. Uh, or if you uh, have some weird internet sites you want us to explore, that, uh, yeah, let us, let us see some of those old sites. Maybe we'll go yeah, on World's Bring it. Bring Links it. in yeah. the description. So, uh, final thoughts, everybody? Let's start with Pinback. Gee, I don't know. You know, it's... Um, honestly, my hope is that it seems to me more and more that most of the people running things are on some level kind of idiots, and I'm hoping they just continue to fail and discredit themselves, and eventually people like Trump will just cause everyone to lose faith in all of these bullshit institutions that are used to exploit and oppress people, and uh, that leads us to consider doing something less shitty. As an I'm open. I'm open to that. Yeah, like I mean, let's be honest. Trump isn't that much worse than any other president in the big scheme of things. If you just don't grade on a curve of only presidents, like everyone who's ever been the president has done tremendously shitty, awful things. Yeah, to the world and to other people, even Obama. 
All right. Uh, okay, Buster. Bleak but true. Uh, I want people to come to the Discord and ask people about my favorite homepage. I will show you my favorite homepage. It's amazing. There's there's gifts. There's songs and dance, and you will love it. All right. Okay. Well, I'm sorry we didn't get to the uh, that topic, but we'll bring you back on and discuss that other thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, cool. Um, I mean, a response yeah. to um, Shaga's sex shop experiences in episode six. So, what do you think <laughs> about vibrators? <laughs> well, I just messaged Pinback while I was listening to that episode. Um, like, Jesus Christ, I'm I'm fucking yelling at my computer right now because you guys are missing a core point about sex shops. Um, I'm saying that, you know, women come in and buy dildos more than women, and I think that you're overlooking the fact that women um, go to sex shops to buy their sex toys. My general manager is a woman. Like, half our staff are women. Really? Yeah, no. We just, like, there, there are two other sex shops in town that are nice, and I assume they probably go there. I mean, women buy vibrators at our store. I mean, it's just the dildos, yeah, specifically. Yeah, that's true. I guess the the few sex shop experiences that I've had, it's, like, one, it's just, like, a bunch of dudes, and in there's, like, no women in there ever because it's intimidating, and then one that's just run by a bunch of lesbians, and those, I think, is what they sell the most there. Interesting. Um, after, oh, this is after one of my different. exes uh, broke up with me, she got a she got a job at a sex shop, which is kind of the opposite of becoming a lesbian. So I feel pretty good. About <laughs> that. But uh, yeah, she said this is kind of a similar thing. It's the guys buying the dildos, ladies buy vibrators. Guys want to fake dick. I think that, that is generally true. Guys, um, guys overestimate how much women actually enjoy dildos. I feel. But I tell you, they love they love those wands. They don't buy that many of the, <laughs> like we have the jackrabbits too, which are these like super hoity toity, like fancy mil doing a million things at once, vibrating dildos that move around and have a I mean, they're expensive. Does, does it come that with that an app? Yet. No, we don't sell anything that comes with an app yet. We also don't sell that uh that dildo camera that hackers can hack into oh my and God. Live stream your Yeah. Your your chooch. I, I look forward to when they release a dil uh, a vibrator that syncs up with your virtual reality porn. Already yeah. have. Yeah. Already have. That'll be the day. But, yeah, I remember. Yeah. But, uh, so so wait, you you what's your take? Like you said, you've had um, my my experiences with I, porn shops are related he, to an ex and and a few trips. But what did you, you say? You've made a few trips there, or what? I'm in Seattle, so it's like a very different scene here. Um, Probably then in like I don't know. You said Southern Indiana. Yeah, it's very depressed <laughs> here. It's probably like as different as you could get. Um, although you know, in in Alabama, you're not allowed. Like sex shops aren't allowed. They're they're legal. Did you know that? Really? Fuck them. Wow. <laughs> Fuck you Alabama. Got, yeah. I mean, you, gotta, a shithole. you gotta whittle your own fake dick out of a tree here. We don't want that natural <laughs> version. This is, yeah. this is my grandpappy's dildo. He passed it down to me, and now I'm giving it to you, son. Car carve it out of carved out of wood. <laughs> I need to. Uh, Grand, this was guys. the first tree the grandpappy cut down when he came out to the homestead. He carved himself up a big old twelve incher, and he made this strap on <laughs> out of an old belt that he got off of a horse's saddle. <laughs> that six ways to Sunday. That's, that's, um, how, that's how they talk in Birmingham. Right. Uh, I need to thank you guys a fantastic video, and maybe we'll include this. It's uh, it's a video of Will actually of this nice old Jewish grandpa, and he he's doing he's doing the Will, and he he does quite a bit. There's there's, there's quite a kind of a pre roll of like you know my wife. If you passed away, you're the love of my life. I want you to have everything, but in the event that you have passed as well, I want, you know, my daughter Becky to have uh, this and that, and my son to have this part of our estate and plan for your future, and uh, I want Becky's uh, son and um, Becky's husband, my son-in-law, Jeff, to have my dildo collection. I've spent <laughs> most of my life collecting very, very fine specimens of the human form. Um, you know, I, I have over a hundred of them in a garage. Um, and in fact, I'm also giving you the keys to a safety deposit box in New York where there is a large purple one. I think it will fit nicely. In the <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Go fuck yourself, Jerry. Go fuck. <laughs> it's really fantastic. Um, yeah, we'll put that link in the description. Too. Yeah, yeah, and so and so that's a, that's a kind of grandfatherly um, sex toy stuff that that I I think is humorous. Well, we're running a little long here, so my final thought is: buy my book, join a Discord, contribute to the Patreon, buy shirts. Uh, don't use vi- don't use image files uh, larger than five hundred by five hundred. Uh, if you must have a website, put it on Angel Fire Geo Cities, and uh, talk to us on ICQ. And, Thanks uh, for having me, some- guys. Yeah, it was fun. Thanks, thanks yeah. for coming on. I know it was super last minute, um, but I really. Yeah. And uh, that's all.